So uh, my name is Joyce Raimondo. I'm here at the Paula Krasner House and Study Center in East Hampton with our guest artist speaker today, Fabiana Lugli. Fabiana Yvonne Lugli. Yvonne, <laughs> right. Um, is, will tell us about her artwork in a moment. Faviana is the founder of Sign of Sound. Um, this is a very special art form which incorporates dance, uh, live music, action painting um, in a very innovative way through improvisation where each um, art form really speaks to the other art form live in progress, okay? And of course, Faviana will tell you more about her work in a moment. Um, but before we get started, I did want to share with you the connection to Faviana's art to Pollock and Krasner, who are known for their action painting. So um, Pollock and Krasner came to the East End in 1945. They bought this property and um, they purchased the property in 1946. Behind us is the now famous barn where Pollock created his famous drip paintings and Lee followed Pollock's, following Pollock's death, Lee painted in the barn studio from 1957 to 1984. Let's take a look at the barn and then we will hear Faviana's presentation. You ready, Faviana? I'm super ready. Okay, good. So now when we enter the um, barn, you see that this first room is used mainly for storage but when we go into the main part of the barn studio, we are required to wear special slippers, which look like this. So Faviana, would you like to put your slippers on and come with me? Absolutely. And of course you can come to visit the national landmark, go to pkhouse.org to um, sign up for a tour, okay? In person. So we're putting on our little booties. And what's unique about this experience is that you can actually step on the floor where Pollock made his drip paintings. It's not stanchioned off, okay? And we're gonna take a quick look. Okay. So welcome, Faviana. Thank you. And so much. Um, as you can see, the floor is filled with drips and splatters, evidence of Pollock's masterpieces. And we have photos on the wall telling the biography of these amazing abstract expressionist painters. This photo was taken by Hans Namath in 19, uh, uh, 1950. And it shows Pollock at work. He's doing something very unique, of course. He takes the canvas off the floor, I mean, off the easel, and places it on the floor. He works from all four sides, and he's not using art materials. He's using industrial materials, dripping paint from sticks. Here are his cans of paint. He's using house paint. At times he's using a baster, dripping the, uh, squirting the paint from the baster and using the stirrer as a painting tool. So this is really groundbreaking. But what is Pollock really doing? What is he getting at here? Pollock is an action painter. He's using his whole entire body as he's painting. It's a highly improvisational method. He has no idea in mind what the painting will come out like in advance. He says, I let the painting lead. And this is really a key idea in Faviana's work as well. This idea of improvisation. Pollock was inspired by jazz. The idea that there's a structure and there's a mastery over the material of paint. He says, I can control the paint, the flow of paint. But at the same time, he is literally going with the flow. One mark leads to the next, just as jazz musicians improvise. But Pollock, unlike Faviana, was not listening to music as he painted. It was silent, but he was inspired by jazz, okay? Now Pollock is known for being an inspiration to 
future generation artists, in particular performance artists. Performance artists are live in the moment. They're not acting out a script. Their performance is the art itself. They're not acting. They don't have a pre-planned idea often, right? Now, what does this have to do with Jackson Pollock? When Pollock is painting, and this is not the finished work, this is just the drips and splatters, the evidence of Pollock's movement and action is evidence in the final painting. It, you can very clearly trace Pollock's movement when you look at his drip paintings, right? Same with Lee Krasner. Right now we have on display where Lee painted her famous painting, Portrait in Green. You can see the marks right here. And we have the photo by Mark P Pataki. She's moving and painting. It's like a dance of paint. And in her final work, you can again, you could clearly see her action. She's also an action painter. We also have that painting temporarily on display in the house. But what happens with performance art, and in the case of Faviana, the performance artists, you can actually see them painting. You can actually see them in action. With Pollock and Krasna, the action is implied by the final work of art, but we don't actually see Jackson Pollock painting, right? Faviana brings together three art forms, music, dance, and action painting, which she's going to tell you about. But she does this in a very unique and surprising way. Each different media sort of, you might say, speaks to one another. The dancer is informed by the painter. The painter is informed by the musician. The musician is informed by the painter. How she does this, I can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> okay, so let's get started on our presentation and we'll leave some time for Q&A. Okay, good, let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, everybody, so it is my pleasure to introduce Faviana um, Lugli Ivan, the founder of Sign of Sound. So Faviana, would you like to say a few words before you uh, share your art? Yes. So here we are, we're back. And uh, my name is Fabiana Lugli. I have this uh, art project, uh, Sign of Sound, that is based on interaction and improvisation between dance, music, and painting. Uh, Sign of Sound is the result of um, different ways to interact and um, um, my background is um, I, I to, to interact between media that I, I learn um, to be able to become a performer. So I was a dancer, I was a professional dancer in uh, uh, ballet and contemporary dance. I have been um, with Felix Ruckert in Berlin. Um, and this is when I got in contact with uh, Pina Bausch uh, um, idea of uh, Tanz Theatre. And, uh, and that was, a, that had a very big impact in my formation. Then I also develop um, um, a knowledge as a musician, because I'm a um, opera singer, I'm a, I'm a um, soprano. And I have learned how to read music. And um, I was very lucky because I had the opportunity to meet uh, great musicians like Pat Metheny and uh, get to know him personally and share with his musicians uh, some of the uh, back, uh, backstage and seeing them for um, many years also. It happened uh, for, for a few you know, years uh, that I could see them rehearsing and uh, structuring their um, improvisation between, you know, like different members of the group. As a matter of fact, I did uh, had some sign of sound performances with Antonio Sanchez, which is 
uh, his drummer, Pat Metheny Group drummer, and uh, Grégoire Moret, who is the harmonica player for uh, Pat Metheny Group as well. And so this had a huge impact in my um, uh, in the development of what it was uh, sign of sound becoming what it was sign of sound at the time. And uh, also as a painter, I had the opportunity to uh, work as a set designer for um, a very important company from Italy, Il Balletto di Roma. And uh, with uh, at that time, I did it with uh, the, the, um, the set designer for uh, El Don Quixote with André de, de, la, Roche, de la Roche. And um, I worked with Milena Zullo, who was this beautiful, uh, who is this beautiful choreographer. And we worked together. Um, put, I put the sets, but I was translating what the uh, choreography was saying dynamically, and I was putting on the stage a huge stage. It was six meter, four meters for twenty. Um, uh, I was uh, pretty much translating the uh, dance dynamic into uh, painting. So this was a huge, uh, crucial moment in my um, development, and all these different. Um, experiences that I had led me into what Sign of Sound had become over the years because I have learned uh, how to interact and improvise between music, dance, and painting. Yes, so this is, um, I will say, what happened during my um, development as a as a performer and uh, when I was a painter I started noticing that uh, my paintings were becoming bigger and bigger and the movement was uh, becoming an element of uh, strong presence and I have realized that I have started dancing while I was painting all or while I was painting I was kind of dancing and the music was always there it was an element that it was always in on 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 the happening of my painting i would say it was always on stage but is it wasn't a real stage when i was painting it was pretty much my art studio but music was always an element and uh, that i was interacting with and um and so it became pretty much natural for me to uh become um an action painter performer I will say yes and also I would like to introduce uh, Francesca Franco who I see she's here with us um, because she could help me um, describe and go deeper into what is a sign of sound and if it's possible here she is uh, Francesca if you would like to present yourself so you yes. can tell. Thank you, Fabiana. Good evening, everyone. I'm talking from Rome, Italy, and um, I'm very pleased with Fabiana's invitation to present her research this evening. As an art uh, historian and critic, I worked with Fabiana in uh, 2006, uh, sharing a piece of her artistic path, uh, which at that time uh, took place between uh, Rome, Berlin, and New York City, I remember. Um, actually, I am professor of History of Art at the Academy of Fine Arts in L'Aquila, and the adjunct professor in History of Contemporary Art at the University of Turin. Um, my most recent publications are focused on the use of verbal and pre-verbal languages in the art of Joseph Beuys, as well on Giordano Bruno's philosophical and linguistic legacy in the neo vanguards and after 2000. Now I would like to, um, to go deeper uh, in the poetics of Fabiana um, and uh, by focusing the attention on three, uh, for me, structural elements uh, of a sign of sound project. So, as to be as concise as possible, I gathered my thoughts into five questions for Fabiana. 
And uh, so um, going slightly um, on my first keywords uh, to describe uh, this project is uh, improvisation. Um, in painting, as in music, improvising means to experience creation in its making. Uh, by starting not from nothing, but from self-confidence and the transformations of images, uh, um, modes, rhymes, and gestures uh, internally assimilated over time. From thought and action emerges the woven idea of body and unconscious mind. Uh, improvising is an art that requires discipline and rigor and um, uh, like any art, must be learned and experienced. So I would like to ask Fabiana, how did you learn and then refine the art of improvisation? Excuse me, can I make a suggestion? This is Joyce, because these are such good questions. I'm wondering if you would show the sign of sound and then ask the questions, I think for the participants, it might make more sense if they know what the art looks like before we get to the questions. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Absolutely. Okay. I am going to try to do it. And thank you so <laughs> much, so much um, Professor Franco. We're gonna get back to those amazing questions.
uh, Fabiana, may I ask you, what are you looking for in the sound and the improvisation? Well, in this specific performance, this was uh, back in the days um, with uh, in Rome. Um, so what happened here, it was more uh, the the dance the, was being led by the music and vice versa. So uh, we were interacting, uh, hold on just one second here. Okay, great. So um, what happened is that the music was actually uh, leading sometimes and everything here happens absolutely under improvisation. There's no pattern, there's nothing. We don't know what we're doing. We're just communicating uh, with under nonverbal communication and we're interacting. Uh, so sometimes you could see in some different parts where I am leading and I am becoming a musician because my tempo is letting the musician play the music after my movement. So they're translating my movement, my physical movement into music. So I am a musician. And in other moments, uh, they take the lead and they are becoming dancers because I am following their melodies or their rhythms and I'm transforming that through the body into their music. And while we're doing this, while we're having this dialogue, an image is being created. Okay. Um, thank you, Fabiana. And. Um... Uh, improvising uh, also means uh, taking the risk to break well-known patterns and conventions. Um, so has to invent one's own completely new world uh, for which there are no parameters of judgment. Um, human beings are not what they are by nature because they are constantly deciding and negotiating what they are and what they do. Uh, this is the future, uh, the future of human life, in my opinion. In order to better join this ever uh, evolving uh, reality, um, the neo avant that is the experimental art born after the Second World War, embraced uh, uh, improvisation uh, as well as the indeterminacy of techniques and processes uh, or uh, materials subject to continuous transformations. Uh, in this way, the neo avant declare art to be a reflective uh, human practice uh, that is one of those activities by which human beings shapes, uh, shape themselves, uh, uh, whether by making or enjoying artworks. So my question is, um, how can art impact people's reality from a psychological, behavioral or cultural point of view? Well, this is a very interesting question and thank you for that. And uh, from my research, under my standpoint, um, I have realized that art, I knew this already, of course, but I have realized that art has a huge impact into um, the person that is approaching the art because art can, can um, for example, in my, I will talk specifically from my um, sign of sound experience, also because sign of sound, it is a methodology. It's a methodology that has been thought for 10 years, uh, more than a decade actually in the Academy of Fine Arts in Rome with the um, professor um, Paolo Ferruzzi and also the Academy of Dance with the director Margherita Parrella. So we have, you know, like going through all this methodology and I experience how uh, art can uh, lead the person into a deep transformation. Um, I have experienced that the movement, the, the, the movement of your own body reacting towards the colors reacting towards sound can um, lead you into um, a dialogue uh, between mind and body. Mm -hmm. And when this happened, uh, a full transformation has happened. 
And uh, so art can be transformative. Yes. Because you can find a, a fusion between mind and body that is a, a fullness of identity. That you Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Because um, the ultimate, ultimate goal uh, for, for, from my perspective is to get to fuse your mind to your body. Because... Unfortunately, our society tends has the tendency to divide the the body and the and the mind, and so through this um, exercise, exercise to react, that means to feel. You have to be connected for you to feel your emotions, to be able to connect to your own emotions, and that's a process that is not really uh, something that is happening. Um, naturally when when these uh when there is this this connection there so the arts can help actually um find a way to reconnect man, mind and body and and when that happens is very important for for the human uh being and also it's, it's powerful transformative i would say it's always better to feel what we um, to feel emotions uh, um, beautiful or uh, um, terrifying that they are in the, in the synthesis yes it's always better than um than not feel anything at all and this is connected to see colors when you feel emotions you see colors when you don't feel emotions you don't see the colors okay Thank you. Um, as a, um, my second keyword to describe your project and your research is uh, the concept of line. Um, um, because over the years, uh, sign of sound has known uh, multiple, multiple variations and uh, as well as a very evolution. Um, I remember at the beginning, the element, the element of the body motion prevailed over the former resolution of painting. Uh, while in uh, more recent performances, uh, the mark is becoming more prominent. The mark is, um, uh, is gaining a greater strength and emphasis uh, on the surface. Uh, artists like uh, Pablo Picasso or Paul Klee over um, overcame the idea of image as color promoted, uh, proposed by expressionist painting. And uh, uh, in doing so, they went deeper into the unconscious thought uh, until finding the uh, primeval image uh, that is uh, the image uh, as line, um, whose length uh, expresses a temporal dimension. Uh, this aspect of temporal dimension, uh, as well explained uh, uh, by Italian artist uh, Piero Manzoni in 1960, in a very um, um, well manner. I think it's no accident that the pictorial process that you enact, Fabiana, uh, consists precisely of bright lines. Uh, so. Is the line's temporal dimension, dimension the element that connects your painting to music, uh, namely to movement uh, in time? Yes, absolutely. The line uh, measures the sound in the space, I will say. So while uh, the music is going on, the sound is happening, the line is a representation of the sound and there is a movement obviously the sound you know travels so we connect to the sound visually so you will have the visualization of the sound and this also is um is the pretty much the name of the project sign of sound okay yeah so, so. we can uh, we can sum up that uh, in a line pure matter becomes pure energy and the space of art becomes uh, the time of life is it correct absolutely absolutely okay. uh, i have another consideration about line 
because a line is just a human mental creation, because in nature, the delineation yeah. between objects as, uh, are merely surfaces. No? As mental reality, a uh, line is a useful uh, subject for understanding the complex unconscious dynamics of the recreation of the real, uh, which underlies all artistic uh, processes. Um, if surrealist regression yearned for a return to the previous state, uh, like childhood or the primitive, uh, recreation brings out something new that didn't exist before. In other words, uh, uh, recreation is open to the future because there is neither repetition of the past nor recollection, but a sort of fanciful memory. Uh, I would like to say that uh, what acts uh, in recreation is imagination. Uh, bringing to mind Pablo Picasso's light drawings uh, uh, photographed by John Mealy in 1949. Uh, could you tell us what does imagination mean in your research and what role does it play? Well, this is um, a very good question as well. And I would like to say that imagining is always creating something new. So with the imagination, we're able to create something different. And uh, imagining, it's so important in my process uh, and also in Sign of Sound because when you are connected to your emotions, once again, you are able to imagine and create a new reality that is towards the future and not, not towards the past. So I will say that is fundamental, uh, important, uh, the capacity of imagining. Because in the improvisation, you have no time to rationally think to something. So absolutely, have... there's no time. <laughs> there's no time to think. First of all, it's forbidden, but there's no time. It's, it's not forbidden. I'm joking, uh, but. Um, there's no time for such a thing. Uh, pure emotions lead you into a new fantastic painting and reality. And it's always transformative because emotions travel with the sound, with the light, with the, there is a movement. It's always coming and coming and transforming and becoming something new. So yes. Uh, the capacity of imagining is fundamental. But once again, if you're not connected mind and body, it's really, really difficult that you will be able to imagine and move forward, I would say. Can we suppose that in the emotion, uh, there is a, a different kind of thinking? Yes, I will say so. <laughs> in the motions there's no thinking maybe <laughs> there is a pure feeling because we're more rational when we're thinking and here it's all about feeling it's a it's all about feeling yes uh, listen Fabiana my third and final keywords to describe your project is light uh, at the 19th International Congress of the International Society for Psychological and Social Approaches to Psychosis, which took place uh, in, in New York City in 1915, um, Massimo Fagioli's Human Birth Theory was presented in the United States. His seminal essay, uh, titled Death, Instinct, and Knowledge, dates back uh, to uh, 1972. And in 2019, it was translated into English by publishing house Lasinodoro in Rome. Uh, according to the Italian uh, psychiatrist theory, uh, at our birth, the light produces through the retina a radical transformation of the infant's brain compared to the uterine stage. 
bringing out the materiality of thought from the biology of the body. And in sign of sound, uh, a significant uh, role is played by light. Could you talk to us about this aspect uh, of the performance? Moreover, you worked in the theater, so you know well the uh, directing uh, function of light. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, uh, first of all, I'm very glad you are uh, asking me this question because I am very um, close to Massimo Fagioli theories. As a matter of fact, I was in New York City at the presentation of uh, his theories. Um, and I remember it was a New York Cooper <laughs> square. <laughs> yes, I was there. And um, and yes, uh, light is very um, important in my uh, performance. I would say that light is the most important element um, because the light connects all, all the media together, really. Um, what I will say is that actually I did my own representation of human birth. Through, through the light, because my sign of sound represents an, um, like an emotional dimension, a physical dimension, it is really organic dimension at the beginning of the, of the stage, of, uh, on the stage, because you have the colors, yes, you do have the colors, but you have a very dim light. It's more um, a dimension that is not expressed yet. And then the first thing that happens between before and after is the light. The light comes in because the gesture comes in, something happens and everything starts there. So this is my own representation of the birth. And uh, sign of sound then becomes, you know, take place and things happens and we represent uh, the transformation of different images through emotions that happen over and over and over again. And they can travel and they can become more dark sometimes and they can become uh, less dark and because life is like that. So it, it, it's also representation of life, not only the beginning, but also life. About yes. the... About the um the uterine stage uh, uh, I noticed that the, the darkness that uh, um, uh, embrace the performer is a, 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 a comfortable darkness true so yes perhaps it's possible to connect to, to this uterine stage where dark, darkness is complete Yes, I would say yes. It's a protective it, dimension, dimension. Exactly. It's not. It, there is absence of uh, direct light. Um, there is a feeling of a light, but it, it is darkness. But it's not mean. It's not mean. Is uh, I would say very calm, you know, and very embracing, and. Um, and it's not, you know, there, there's not um, any um, bad emotions or feeling right before. And then when the lights come in, everything can happen, you know, like, but mm -hmm. I, I, I love to say that is a joyful, because um, I had, I had a baby, I have, I have my son also, you know, oh. like, so when, when my baby came to, to life, a huge transformation and happen and and yes i would say it is a, a very strong moment before and after when the light comes in yes and the um, um and the music is the connection between uh, uh, before and after something that uh, comes from the outside that uh, work like a stimulo for um, uh, for the infants yes absolutely yes yes mm -hmm. it's um as i said it's something that happened before and 
with the light, there is completely a different reaction and reality. And perhaps uh, um, the light is exactly the element uh, that is uh, originally yours uh, respect uh, to the uh, Pollock legacy, for, for example. Absolutely, because my work um, is in substruction, it's not in addiction. I, I don't add Colors. the color, I subtract the color. And when I subtract the color, the light comes in. Okay. Um, so, uh, last consideration, um, because in the um, since the conquest of expressionist painting by Kandinsky, uh, music has been the the language that uh, more than any other has been able to express an inner world free from the limitation of the matter, and hence a spiritual world. But in a sign of sound, it is a matter that is displayed in all its vitality, uh, not only as kinetic energy, but also as the unseen moving images of the mind that are directly transposed by gestural strokes onto the canvas. So, um, it seems to me that you uh, um, uh, you uh, bring with you the gestural painting from neo-expressionism abstractism, but you um, purge it uh, existential post-war suffering. Yes, the creation of the image is something that, of course, it comes from an in inner world, and the way it, it is going to happen it's always connected emotionally there is there's a, st a strong connection of course with the with with the inner uh, world yeah. that, that that is always connected to um to the emotions in in this yes. process yes what i would i would like to say is that you um uh, what separates you uh, from the neo-abstract expressionism uh, of the second post-war is that in your gestural painting, there is no existential suffering. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, 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 no. There is a no, I will say, I yes. would say that there is not because um, it has been you know, like it happened in evolution because my painting, for example, my, my performance at the beginning, it was more physical. When you met, when you and I met, I was more a dancer on the stage and it was more physical and more things were happening physically. But now I, I still have dancers on the stage. We have musicians. We have also theatrical elements. But now uh, my interaction uh, with the canvas is more um, visual. So mm -hmm. it's more peaceful, I would say. Yes. Okay. Yes, I agree. And um, so I um, underline things that separate your research from the neo uh, abstract expressionism of a uh, second post war. Uh, instead, uh, on the contrary, um, there is uh, something uh, that uh, uh, is important in the Pollock legacy, because in its uh, arbitrary rules and unskilled craftsmanship, uh, Pollock's dripping brings out a human psycho-physical uh, dimension that is uh, as original as in its, uh, its uh, universal in which body and mind are fused together. So it can be a first uh, um, example of this fusion. Yes, um, as I said, um, the fusion uh, between mind and body are really necessary for you to be able to express your feelings, your emotion, and to create images because the inner image that we have you can how do you connect to your inner image if not through your emotions okay thank you fabiana
Would right. anyone, um, I'm wondering also if there's questions and is there anyone on the meeting who actually worked with you? Any of the musicians or other colleagues? Who would like yes, to they were here, but um, they're traveling tomorrow morning. <laughs> so they were waiting and they were like, oh, we got to go because it's, oh. you know, like they're, they're, <laughs> they're traveling in the morning because they're we're going to have the show here on Saturday 21st. We're actually, uh, I was mentioning the the previous musicians that I work with, but now I'm I'm actually working uh, again with uh, another um, a beautiful uh, musician, and he is uh, J D Allen, a New York uh, saxophone player. And actually, it's very interesting. This is something I would like to share with you all because uh, J D and I met through Fabio Morgera in uh, Rome, actually. I met Fabio Morgera in, in, in New York when I was traveling and, you know, spending time in between New York City and Rome. But when they came, when they went to Rome, we all experiment and we had uh, a show uh, with uh, JD and Fabio. And I reconnect with the JD and he's back with us into our uh, performance. So he will interact at this time with, um, he's a jazz musician, but he's now open to um, electronic music. And we are actually using electronic music as improvisation um, also. And we have these beautiful musicians uh, that are coming from Rome and the name of the group is Entropia and they will be here. So Entropia, we're online. They send me the messages. We're here. What's going on? <laughs> so I apologize. Here. Oh. Oh, Fabiana, yes. I'm here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm here. In Italy, it's absolutely night, you know. <laughs> we will try to sleep because tomorrow we have to travel very, very early in the morning. But... <laughs> I, I was connected. At, I was connected at the at the beginning, and um, uh, I I, yes, I saw a lot of problems. But Nadine sent a WhatsApp to to advise that uh, the the Zoom uh, restarted. Nadine is okay. our panelist, uh, yeah. uh, Nadine Katuda, and she will be at the at the event the twenty first. Uh, you uh, you can find us on Eventbrite for this uh, event that, if I can say, is it will be supporting Culture for One, which is an organization that helps introduce talking about the power of art, you know, if it's transformative. And yes, the answer is yes. Culture for One introduces art uh, to kids in foster care. So we're going to support them. And it's very, you know, something very dear to all of us. And um, so Marco is traveling uh, from Rome because uh, they're, they're going to be uh, here because we're going to perform on Saturday. <laughs> And mm -hmm. uh, you can you can find you know like the um, the event and the event bright you can find us in East Hampton. Yeah, and someone just put the link in the chat so you can check on there as well. You could copy oh, that. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now a thank question you. came in. We have a few minutes. Someone said, "Can you um, let me see who asked?" It. Nadine said, "Can you talk to us about how you?" Uh, taught the sound of sign of sound methodology. So I have taught uh, this methodology in the Academy uh, of Fine Arts in Rome and Academy of Dance, and uh, also with the musicians. Marco was also there uh, with me, and uh, Ale Alessandro as well. And we were teaching dancers, uh, musicians, and at the Academy of Fine Arts, we had a lot of painters who wanted to become uh, paint performers. So we were uh, guiding them through our methodology and uh, teach them how to react and interact uh, one to the other and forget about what they knew as dancers or as musicians, as Perf, you know, like uh, uh, painters. And uh, this is the most difficult aspect uh, to deconstruct. And maybe Marco can tell us more about how a musician will be able to do so knowing their own techniques and, you know, have their own structures. How yes, difficult. Yes. 
Yes, uh, but we have to consider that uh, uh, every um, each each performance uh, uh, we had in the past and will have in the future will be totally different from the, the previous one because uh, uh, the conditions, the emotions, uh, the, the 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 elements of the of the team will be different, could be different, but also the, the emotion could be different. So it's very, very difficult to, to explain in few words how the, the performance uh, in, in our interaction is uh, uh, taking form because, uh, because uh, uh, the, the art of improvisation is is not easy to to explain uh, especially if uh, you consider that uh, the the music not traditional music the electronic music is composed by a lot of elements so our our effort with fabiana and uh, in the past and uh, now saturday the uh, famous uh, uh, jazz uh, jazz saxophonist uh, JD Allen. Allen is to exact, exactly is to to build a, a a moment of magician. It's uh, uh, you have to 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 hear to understand because uh, we'll try to to um, to to link. Uh, all the elements in that moment, uh, Fabiana, Art, and all the musicians uh, and the dancer, if they would, they, they would be Valentina Buffone, Valentina, yes. Valentina, just to, to produce a unique emotional elements. This is a, only the philosophy, of course, uh, um, from a technical point of view, Frankly speaking, in few words and few minutes, it is absolutely difficult to, to explain. But uh, maybe it is easier to understand if uh, you have the opportunity to see and hear. Perhaps, so you have to come. <laughs> yes, but perhaps I found a, a sort of slogan for describing uh, the improvisation. As a slogan by the Italian artist Vincenzo Agnetti, um, mm -hmm. is forgetting by her. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Absolutely. By her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely right. It's a, a metaphysical definition, but uh, I <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah, yeah. So I, there is I, a question here that yes. I can see. Could you describe the medium you're using? So we are going to have painting. We're going to have four amazing musicians. Uh, they're all going to be on the scene improvising with a dancer. And uh, there's also video projections. Uh, so as you saw in, in, the, in the video uh, that, that I showed. So these are uh, pretty much the what but we're going to have. Uh, you prepare the stuff, the, the, the plastic surfaces, uh, uh, plexiglass surfaces that is uh, uh, lighted at the back. Yes. Yes. In the, in the, the matter of fact. Yes, yes. We have a, a structure that is, um, it's, a, it's a set, it's a full set. Because as you said, uh, I am coming uh, from from the theater, and light is very important in the um, as an element itself in the theatrical world. Uh, the light is an element, and uh, so we have this big structure with colors and lighting. It's like a lighting box, and um, and so we have the colors and the methodology also explains how to interact not only with the surface, but uh, how do you interact on the surface with a certain thickness of color, different type of colors, speed, um, textures, intensity of light. There's so many elements and these we're going more into the set design specifically, but to do all this, you have to know all this knowledge, you know? It's not, uh, it's not improvising. Improvising 
is not improvise. <laughs> <laughs> to improvise, you can't improvise. <laughs> yes. Faviana and uh, Professor Franco, we're going to have to end. And you know, we could discuss this for hours. And I do hope if people are in the area of East Hampton, that they take advantage of this amazing event on Saturday. And as I said, the link is on Eventbrite and this video will also be posted on YouTube if you want to revisit it. And um, that will be in about one week. And um, Faviana, thank you so much for sharing your creativity, your innovation. And also it is true what you just said that in order to improvise, it takes tremendous skill and knowledge, you know, to, to be able to channel your emotion in that way, to be in the moment. To me, it's almost like a meditation in a way. You're 100% in the moment. And that maybe sounds simple, but it's not necessarily easy for everybody. So, Thank you so much for bringing this art form to the United States. Appreciate that. Thank <laughs> and you. Thank you, Professor, for coming on all the way from Rome, which is really wonderful that we have access to Zoom in this way. And a big thank you to everyone who stuck with the program today. I do want to mention, um, because we had some technical difficulties, and I do want to mention we're continuing in October this theme about uh, movement and art. So on Thursday, um, I'm going to do a Zoom program slash workshop, which is about dance in modern art. Not so much being a dancer, but how dance is literally portrayed or um, inspires painting. Okay? okay. And then we will also have a, a workshop on Alexander Calder. And we'll have a virtual cafe. Anyone who would like to come on to the virtual cafe and share your art and how movement inspires your art, we're going to do all of these programs in October. So go to pkhouse.org. Any closing thoughts, Faviana? Uh, before we go, I would like to uh, mention two persons, two people that are really helping me uh, put things together, um, besides Professor Frank, of course. Uh, Giada Candeloro and Clarissa Maracci, and we're being part of a group of, uh, you know, like researching uh, also different aspects of Sign of Sound. So I, I wanted to thank them. They're not here, but uh, I wanted to, you know, say thank you for that. And there's other questions. So I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think we have time though, right? Uh, I think we're going to have to end now. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. thank you so much for having us here and share this beautiful time and in in the Pollock Museum that it was amazing experience and uh, looking forward for the next one and thank you all of you for for being here with us